Szeretettel köszöntöm a kedves diákokat ismét, érettségére készülünk. Angol középszintű szóbeli témaköröket veszünk át együtt. Előző videókban már részletesebben elmondtam, hogy miből áll egy érettségi, egy, egy középszintű szóbeli érettségi. A mai óránk témája egyébként a Home, City and Countryside. Ez egy olyan téma, ami egyenként is sokat lehetne róla beszélni. Most egy rövid videóban próbálom belesűríteni azokat a példakérdéseket, lehetséges példaválaszokat, amik hasznosak lehetnek számatokra az érettségén. És beszélek azokról a dolgokról is, amik esetleg megakaszthatják a vizsgát, leblokkolhat tőle a tanuló. Mik azok a dolgok, amikre együtt készülhetünk, vagy otthon készülhettek, hogy, hogy, hogy simán menjen le ez a szóbeli vizsga. Ugye több éve részt veszek középszintű érettségi szóbeli vizsgáztatásban, és fontosnak tartom, hogy a felkészüléskor egy-két példát elmondjak segítő szándékkal, ami nektek hasznos lehet majd, hogy, hogy, hogy a nagy izgalomtól ö, se blokkoljatok le. Tehát, bemegyünk az érettségi vizsgára, nincs felkészülési idő. Amikor kihúzod a tételt angolból, akkor rögtön kezdetés. Lesznek rövid kérdések, utána jön egy szituációs feladat, amit az vizsgáztató tanára játszol el, és a képleírás a végén. Oké, okay. mivel angol óráimon és angol nyelven tanítok, csak ritkán szólalok meg magyarul, ha nagyon-nagyon kell, ezért most is átváltunk angolra. Oké, okay. so... Today's topic is home, city and countryside. What are the things that we can mention here? What is the key vocabulary that you need to be able to talk about your everyday life, your experience and um, um, things like looking for a house or talk about your surroundings? Short questions, example. You can get a question like, where do you live, what's it like, or describe your home. Uh, is it a house or a flat? Now, uh, what you can see here where there are different types of accommodation, like block of flats. Uh, you can even say, maybe in the USA they use condominium, okay? Block of flats, condominium, társas has. Uh, we sometimes say block of flats for what we call in Hungarian panel has. Uh, yes, you can live in a flat. In the USA, you say apartment, okay? And you can live in a studio flat. What is that? It's a one bedroom uh, uh, flat. There is just one main area where um, you have your bedroom corner, you have your living room in the same place, and there is a bathroom which is separated. Okay, um, now a lot of people here either can blogged, can be blogged, or say garden house. Don't say that. In English we don't say garden house. Maybe a house with a garden, but there's a name for it in English, and this is detached house, okay? Detached house. Kertes ház. Um, it's a house actually with a garden, but you can also say semi-detached house, which is ikerház. Mm, there are other types of houses like um, we call it a townhouse or a row house, R O W row house. Uh, maybe in Great Britain they say terraced house, in Hungarian short house. Okay. Um, Everybody knows what it means, short has. Um, so, you can say what type of home is it? Do you live in a flat, a detached house or a semi-detached house? Uh, you can say whether your home is, um, um, it has a stylish, furniture, uh, stylish interior design with stylish furniture. Um, you have a lot of appliances, household appliances in your home. Or you can mention that your home is nice, but it needs redecoration. You say whichever you want, you feel like, okay? Let's get on. Next question. Describe your room. Uh, what kind of vocabulary do you need here? Furniture. Desk, wardrobe, bookshelf, bed, carpet. Uh, you can have a wall-to-wall -wall carpet in your, in your uh, room. Curtain. Or you can have a shade on the window, a curtain or a shade. Redoing. 
Uh, talking about the colors, you can say I have a blue and a brown and a black and white something, but you can say something like I have neutral colors in my room or pastel colors or vivid colors, okay? So neutral colors like um, um, those are like close to the natural colors, they're not so vivid, okay? And they can be very relaxing, okay? It can be cozy, cozy. That's a warm feeling we call otthonos, otthon melege, cozy. Pastel colors, okay. Mm, you can have a wallpaper with stripes, okay, stripes on your wallpaper or you can have different shapes. Um, you can mention if there is a relaxed atmosphere in your, in your room or you like this uh, lively atmosphere which is created by your I don't know, the, the decoration or the posters or the colors of your room. Um, it can be a messy room or sometimes messy, but you can be a very organized person and then you keep your room tidy, always spacious, well-lighted. You can use this for a flat or a house as well, spacious, tagos, well-lighted. Like you have a lot of windows and uh, there is always a little or more sunshine in your rooms. What do you like about your, the surroundings of your home? Well here, the vocabulary that you might need, well, you can have parks. Uh, first of all, surroundings mean the area close to your home, near your home, and sometimes we say the neighborhood, which is not just some say chag, but, but the közvetlen um, környezet, the neighborhood. Parks, avenues, nice streets. It can be a residential area, which we call in Hungarian kertvárosi rész, residential area. Uh, you can have some beautiful mansions or houses there, or you can have some quaint houses. Quaint, which means uh, strange, but in an attractive way, okay? It's a nice little house. Okay, you can have some pedestrianized areas in the surroundings of your home. Pedestrianized area is gyalogos terület, ahova autó nem mehet be. Pedestrianized area is a C1 level vocabulary. So if you don't say this, it's not a problem. But if you, but you can say, if you, once you learned it, you can use it at the exam. It's just uh, an extra point. Fountains. But there can be factories, noisy streets, traffic jam, pollution, noisy roads. Um, what are the facilities? Are there any facilities in your surrounding facilities? Are there places where you can go if you want, if you, if you run errands, like you need to do your shopping, you need to go to the post office. Facilities like létesítmények, uh, shop, cinema, theater, um, hairdresser. Mm. Um, petrol station, um, swimming pool, football pitch, uh, things like that. Or you can go for a walk or you can have a picnic in your area. You can like this about that. Or you can, well, well, if there's nothing, surely there is something in your surroundings. Let's get to situations. So you get a paper with the instructions, you read it, and then you start to act out this dialogue, this, this situation with your examinator teachers. Teacher, let's see. Your cousin is going to start college, so he or she wants to move to the capital where you live. He, she wants to get, um, get some, uh, she wants you to help finding a flat to rent. Um, your cousin would like to live close to the university and not very expensive. And typically, these are the requirements so, uh, for everybody. They want to be close to something important where it usually costs a lot of money to live. So anyway, these are the prompts. Uh, your examinator teacher will play the role of your cousin. Uh, he, they, they move to the uh, city, the capital, and you help. Uh, this type of conversation is not really uh, an argument. You don't argue, don't. Maybe there are, some, there are some points you need to agree about or disagree, but it's not a debate. It's rather giving recommendations. Um, how to rent a flat. 
Um, so you can look for rental apartments. Um, you can rent from an owner or you can go into a real estate agency to ask for some ideas. Estate agency is the Ingatlan um, Udnökség. Um, so they will tell you about the possibilities. Maybe you find something in the city center. Maybe you find something in the suburbs on the outskirts of the city. Uh, when you would like to rent the flat, maybe you will have to pay a deposit. Uh, it's a money that you pay as a security amount of money. Like in case anything happens, you, you break something and um, uh, then this money will be used to to, to get that thing fixed. Um, and if there is no problem, you, you didn't break anything, you didn't ruin everything in the flat, the deposit is fully refundable, which means you get back the whole amount when you leave. Um, so you have to find out about the utility bills. Utility is the amount of money that you pay for heating, water, running water, um, gas garbage, maintenance, you pay for some, in some block of flats, well, in all of the block of flats, you pay for maintenance, some extra money. They maintain uh, the corridor lighting and the elevators, okay. Location, as I mentioned, is it located in the city center suburbs, residential area, very nice. Is it furnished? Does it have furniture? Uh, for some people, it's very important that it's, uh, uh, it's unfurnished okay, because they have their own furniture they would like to um, take that with them and some people like it furnished because they don't have everything and they would like this modern atmosphere of a nice flat. So um, vocabulary if you rent the flat you are the tenant uh, and the person who will let you rent a flat, the person who is the owner of that flat or house is the landlord, uh, the owner, okay? Bérbeadó. Okay, another question is, does it have a view? It's an additional question, does it have a view on a landscape or on a busy road? Okay, is it pet friendly? Can you take your pet? It's a question. Okay. Mm. So there's a renting contract that you have to first read very carefully and then to sign. Maybe you need a guarantor. Uh, it's not basic vocabulary of B, B1 or B2 level exam, but it's very useful to know. Guarantor or co-signer is the tunnel. Well, uh, in this situation, you explain the possibilities to your cousin, you ask questions, maybe you try to convince your cousin to give up one of his requirements because you will find something cheaper but it's not very close to the university or you found a very nice flat close to the university but it costs a lot of money so you need to convince your cousin to accept that. You can mention some of the requirements of a rental contract, location, stuff like that. Now let's get to the picture-based description. You will get one picture of a city and the countryside maybe okay it's just an example city and countryside uh, you start by saying what you can see in the pictures shortly so for example in the first picture i can see a nice uh, photo or i can see a nice landscape maybe it's a village so it's evident that 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 is in the countryside and in the second picture i can see a busy city center, okay? What is the vocabulary that you can say? What are the uh, drawbacks and benefits of living in the city or living in the country? What are your preferences? Very typical question. There are a lot of things to say here. If you live in a city, you start with the, maybe the benefits, okay? So you have good public transport, a lot of people keep complaining about it, but it's still effective, it's, it's effective, okay? You have public transport, surely it runs more often than in the countryside, okay? 
job opportunities, you have greater job opportunities, you have a wide variety of job opportunities or uh, accommodations, like you can choose to live in the city center on the outskirts, you can choose to hire, uh, rent a flat or rent a house. Uh, more facilities, there are more possibilities to for, for entertainment, you can go to nightclubs, which is not the same as in Hungarian, okay? You can go to the cinema, you can eat out. There are a wide variety, a wide range of restaurants, uh, cheaper ones, more expensive ones, fancy restaurants, uh, junk food, uh, fast food restaurant. Mm, you can see there is always plenty to do in the city, in, in, in a capital. Um, wide range of shops if you want to go shopping. Okay, some drawbacks. A traffic jam, especially in the rush hour, it can be really tough. Uh, or traffic congestion, that's a different word, that's a synonym of traffic jam. Uh, public transport can be crowded or cramped. Um, pollution, the city can be really polluted. Okay, the air is, uh, there is air pollution, a dense air pollution, a lot of cars, toxic fumes, exhaust fumes, a lot of factories. Um, there are more beggars in the streets, more homeless people, okay? And um, let's talk about the country. Uh, some benefits, typical benefits of the, living in the country is the fresh air you have wonderful fresh air. It's not that polluted or it's not polluted at all, okay? No crowd, surely. Uh, I can't imagine a village with traffic jams, okay? Peace and quiet if you live in a village. Well, of course, if we talk about the countryside, we don't necessarily have to think about a village, a remote area somewhere at the end of the country, you can think about um, a rural town, uh, which is somewhere between the village and the capital city. You can also live in a rural town, but we very usually take the example of a village because it's easier to compare and contrast with the city. So uh, you have peace and quiet in a village. It's very quiet. Some people even complain that it's too quiet. Um, blue skies healthier living. Uh, sure, you spend more time in the fresh air. Uh, you have to walk more because there is no public transport, you, so you do more physical exercise. If you keep animals, uh, you also need to go outdoors many times and, and that's also kind of exercise. Um, there's a greater sense of community in the village, in the countryside. There are less people and the um, people who live there know better each other. Sometimes they have the feeling of everybody knows everybody. And sometimes the rumors and gossip spread very quickly in a small community. Be careful with that. Drawbacks. Uh, less job opportunities. High rate of unemployment can be a problem. Commuting far, so because people have less job opportunities, if they still choose to live in the village, they commute a lot. In Hungarian we say ingazni, they travel a lot to, to find work in a town or in the capital. There is not much to do. No cinemas, no shopping malls. Um, you really have to be creative to, to find the sort of entertainment for yourself in a village going on picnics with your friends can be one option. Uh, cell phone reception, mobile phone reception can be poor or bad. Yes, there are some cities when it's very difficult to contact, to, to be in touch with each other because of this, okay. Now when you talk about your personal preferences, most students cannot decide and this is normal. Uh, not many people would like to live in the city centre it's not very pleasant, but for some people it's an option, they like it very much, why not, of course. So you can say that you would like, the, in the future maybe, you would like the combination of both. You don't want to live too far from the city centre because you would like to have some kind of entertainment in your life. Uh, so maybe you would like to live in a rural town 
or you would like to live on the outskirts of a big city which is close to nature, you can have peace and quiet, but you can easily get into the city center wherever you need to run errands, go to work or anything else. Okay, so that was all for today. Remember that these are just examples. You can have uh, some better answers for the questions. After all, I thank you very much for your attention. Good luck with your preparation. Goodbye.